Well, here we are outside of the main historic entrance to Mammoth Cave. This is Joe Douglas. He's a professor of history at Volunteer State College. Joe, thanks for being our guide today. You're welcome, Chip. I'm glad to be here. So folks are probably used to seeing stalactites and stalagmites when they go down into caves. We're going to see graffiti today. How common is something like that to be able to be seen? Well, historic graffiti is actually fairly common in caves, but Mammoth Cave has some of the best and a lot of it. And people would write their names in the cave. Not accepted today. Don't do this today. Right. Uh, but in the past, people did do that. And if it's more than 50 years old, the Park Service considers it historic. And we're interested in who those people were, why they were here, what they did when they were here. So the cave itself really did gain prominence around the time of the Civil War. Why were soldiers in the cave? What was the draw for them to be down there? The cave was famous. Uh, by that period of time, many people were coming to the cave already. Uh, we estimate probably four to 5,000 visitors were here in the summers normally. It had a lot of cultural and personal significance to the people who came here. So they were here, they just wanted to go check it out because they'd heard about it. They heard about it, they wanted to see it, they wanted to write home to their parents and others that they had seen the cave. And they were also a little bit possessive. It was a site that was uh, so famous, it would be prestigious if your side, the Union or the Confederate, controlled it, owned it, could show it, uh, and that sort of thing. Well, I want to go check it out. You ready to go? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's, Let's go. It. So, Joe, Civil War soldiers who had lived in the regimented life of camp, then they came upon a place like this. What was that like for them to go from that camp life to actually being in a cave like this? It was really great for them because it was a break, a diversion away from the, as you said, regimented life of camp. Uh, and it was different from the landscapes that they were going through. It was just an unusual space. They really enjoyed it. It had interesting curiosities to look at. Why is this, as a result, historically important, and how different is it from a, a paper document or something that you might come across? What they write tends to be a little bit different than in a paper document. It tends to be spontaneous. It also tells us sort of what the soldiers were thinking at a particular time. It must be remarkable for local Kentuckians who can come in here and see their great-great-grandfathers oh, wow. or grandmothers, because women came in the cave too, see their names written in the wall. So Joe, what was the, the real motivation for soldiers to want to leave their mark in the cave? Did they just want to say hello and that they'd done it, or was there a bigger motivation there? Yes, they're trying to simply show, I am here. It's also a mark of achievement, like I made it back this far. Right. But then there's more than that. Instead of identifying with the hometown, they're identifying with the regiment, like okay. the Indiana or Illinois or Kentucky regiment that they're serving in. The Confederate names are more concentrated because they generally did not have guides. Oh. They came in unaccompanied. Okay. So they tended to go to the easy to get to large areas. Right. Later, the Union soldiers did employ guides, and so they're in some of the more remote and distant areas. So this is Thomas Quirk, it says Lexington, then it says Morgan Squadron, 1862. Later he becomes a scout, a trusted scout, reporting directly to General Morgan, and they called it Quirk's Scouts. And we found these uh, two Confederate soldiers who are clearly identifiable, uh, and they put their unit, uh, and this other one even wrote Rebel Soldier. This is prepared, so this is planned or pre-planned. He definitely darkened the surface with the oil lamp. So you have the Confederates and then now the Union soldier in the same spot contesting it. Separated by feet, basically. Mere feet. Wow. Joe, how personally fulfilling is it when you have that eureka moment back here, when you find a name and you're able to actually put that together with the historical record and learn who that person is? It's very exciting. It is like a detective story. Uh, we find the name, then we try to locate who they are, then we try to build a biography of them. 
The Union soldiers are frankly easier to identify than the Confederate soldiers. We have the hotel register from the later stages of the war and they would write their hometown or where they were going and so we have additional information. And they, you said they would take basically an oil lamp and use the flame from the oil lamp and guide that along to kind of delineate what the thing was they were trying to draw. That's right. So they had oil lamps with chimneys on them, and you could use that to leave the mark where you wanted it. You could use candles. Some of them would actually use torches. And of course, pencils were easy to carry, widely available by the time of the Civil War, and so you see a lot of penciled marks as well. Joe, how is it that we can still see pencil marks that are close to 200 years old and some of these other markings that are here in the cave that look like they were done yesterday, but they're several hundred years old. Why can we still see those? We're far enough in the cave now that this is a very stable environment. The temperature doesn't fluctuate. The humidity doesn't fluctuate. There's no exposure to sunlight or UV. There's no rain. There's no erosion. And so it will remain down here, I mean, almost indefinitely. They are a record, a historical and, frankly, genealogical record, which has often been ignored. Wow. Of the thousands of names written on the walls in Mammoth Cave, researchers have identified more than 40 Civil War soldiers, with many more waiting to be discovered. Hey, everybody, I'm Chip Polston, your host for Kentucky Life. Now, if you like that story and you want to explore more of Kentucky, click right here to see more stories from our show.